Okay, I think we're going to make a start. There's a few more that we're um, anticipating might be joining us, but I guess they will dial in as we get going. Uh, so good afternoon, everybody. There's some uh, familiar names and some unfamiliar names. Uh, most of you, I can't see you, but to the two ladies that I can see, hello and welcome. And uh, just to say hi, <laughs> um, part of what we wanted to do really, sort of starting last week really, is think about how we can help other people who are probably going through this um, maybe unexpected um, or maybe anticipated uh, change and what we could do to be helping people who are perhaps working from home or somewhat up against it at the moment. So we do a lot of workshops around change normally. Uh, this doesn't feel normal, uh, but we wanted to kind of share some of the things that we know and some of the things we think might be helpful. So it's a bit of a taster from us today to hopefully be helpful for you today, get you doing a bit of a bit of thinking, bit of interaction, uh, and generally be useful going forward. So we're looking to keep it kind of short, sharp and interactive and generally give you some help today in these uh, interesting times we find ourselves. So we're using Zoom. Um, those of you who've been dialing in with us the previous couple of days, will be getting the hang of it. We're getting the hang of it too. Uh, but as you'll see on your own screen, you can see the photographs of some of us down the side. You can scroll up and down if you want to see more. Uh, we've muted your sound so that we don't get any background so uh, you are sort of muted from our end um, and it's up to you if you want to show us your faces or not friendly faces are nice but don't feel you have to uh, hopefully you can all see mine um, if you move your cursor right at the top of the screen or the bottom you'll see a ribbon and then that will give you um, a few things there one of which is chat so there'll be a couple of points we're going to ask you to send in responses to the thing we're talking about so we'll ask you to kind of just type a, type a message in, which will go to everyone, and then we can um, sort of pull those things together. And we might use a couple of polls as well during the activity. So when that happens, I'll explain it. The poll should appear on your screen. If it doesn't, drop a chat line across, but some people's connectivity, particularly those of you who work for the NHS, I think for some of you the connectivity won't go as far as polls, but hopefully for most of you it will. Um, there's one or two other techniques that we might use today. So we're all learning a lot about Zoom. So hopefully that's, um, that's, that's, that's the IT lesson done. And uh, 30 minutes, so we'll finish at half three. Obviously, I'm kind of like leading for you today. Those of you who know me will know that I'm very much a face-to-face -face facilitator. So um, I would like to have uh, the interaction from you. So please do chat back when we ask you to. Um, make sure you've got your, your plugged in with your computers already, with your power cable. And a bit of paper and pen uh, could be useful for you, hopefully to capture any key things that you think, oh, that is really useful for me today. And there's a couple of points and we'll ask you just to do a little bit of thinking and capture something for yourself. We are recording today and the whole thing will be available on our website probably by tomorrow, along with the other webinars that we've already done and we've got more coming. So if you're not always able to dial in, you could go onto our website and then you can get hopefully that support and a few insights and nuggets from there. So that's our kind of approach really uh, to running webinars. Uh, so it's a bit of a taster of what we do. So we're going to, just going to give you a bit of a flavour. Um, obviously, there's much more we would do if we were face to face. So this is me, for those of you who don't know me. This is me sort of uh, before I had my hair cut. Um, I've been around for a while, very much in the Nottingham East Midlands area. So some of you will definitely have met me or my colleagues along the way. Um, really, really um, devoted, really, to helping people be their best and deal with what life throws at them, at both work and home. So I'm kind of... Um, enjoying rising to the challenge of some of the home changes as well elderly father and other family members uh, but very much enjoyed my grandson's fifth birthday party through the wonders of facetime yesterday so uh, we managed to all get together virtually so it's amazing what can be done uh, in different methods and i think probably it's amazing what can be done is part of where we're coming from in terms of wanting to help us think about okay change is happening how can we almost make the most of it and build our resilience and our capability for the next one. So that's why we thought resilience was a good uh, focus on this because this is a big change we're in the moment, but it isn't the only one. So many of you may have other changes going on at home or at work, and it's not like all the other change is gonna stop just because of current one. So there's something for us as human beings and you know, what is our ability to be able to absorb change without kind of going and displaying into behaviours that may be dysfunctional for us or others. That's kind of a definition of resilience, but also that ability to bounce back. And I think that's a phrase we're hearing, and obviously something we want to be able to do ourselves, almost like absorb during change, have that bounce back ability so that we're ready for the next one. And you know, that's what life is like these days. So the more able we can be to do that, 
and what it will bring us. So one of the things we, we know now, and you'll know this as well, is, you know, is that actually change is almost the wrong word now. It's actually, it isn't that it's a change, it's just the next iteration. And actually we're always sort of working and living in the midst of change, the last one, the current one, the next one. And if anything, the whole thing feels like it's accelerating. Uh, and that's the kind of thing in terms of, you know, homework, different sources of that change. Also the complexity of it, particularly the changes around our lives, around kind of Google characteristics, technology, different generations, uh, different expectations. So if you think there's a lot of change going on now, I can tell you this will be the period in your life with least change. It's only going to continue would be our reflection. Therefore, anything we can learn to do to help ourselves roll with it, bounce back, is kind of all to the good. The challenge we have, though, is a lot of that thing coming at us, you know, from, you know, global society, technology, but we're still the same warm human beings that we always were. We haven't developed so much radically as creatures, really, over the centuries. So there's some things that make it difficult for us because of our sort of human, our human qualities. And one of those things is that actually, at a human level, we sort of want and expect a pause between change. It's natural, that sense of almost wanting to etch it completed, take a breath, recalibrate, let it embed, settle in, get back to normal, dare I say, before the next one. So we want to catch our breath. That's kind of a human expectation. And actually, we don't get that. So if you have a feeling almost of hiccups or kind of being jolted into the next thing, that's not surprising. And then the other thing that applies to us, I think particularly those of us in uh, management, leadership roles, or where we are the person at home, the family look to us for kind of, you know, informal leadership, which is pretty well all of us really is. But actually what's happening now is we're being asked to manage the world as it is, at the same time being involved with the change that's coming. And that gives us a tension that I'll say a little bit more about later on. So there's almost a bit of a sort of moral compromise there about right now, we're trying to do a lot of things and manage things that we're familiar with, but there's also the whole change around us as well. So one of the things that's helpful is thinking about how we um, kind of approach that change or the way in which we sort of take it on board, the way we interpret it. So one of the ingredients that we know is really helpful when we work with groups is to think about for a particular change, how much of it is imposed upon us and how much of it is something we have choice over. So I'd like to ask you that question and ask you to send a chat. So when you choose change, when it's something you're choosing, how does it feel? What's it like for you? And what are some of your thoughts? So if you can sort of just chat using that ribbon at the top of the screen with when you choose a change what's it what's it like for you um what do you notice about yourself what are you thinking <laughs> this is great they're all coming through really fast Okay, got some great things coming through there. I think the, the, the overwhelming response there was it actually it feels exciting. It feels exciting, it feels energizing. I've got a sense of actual motivation for it. Still maybe nervous because you don't know what's gonna happen, but there's a general sort of quality to your responses about excitement, ready to move into action, some sense of um, control and actually kind of action, you know, ready to get stuck in. Now, not all change is chosen. And sometimes what we know is if a change is imposed upon us, it can feel very different. So can I ask you now that when you experience an imposed change, maybe like suddenly having to work from home or the certainty of what you were going to be doing in May is no longer there. So when change is imposed, how do you feel and what do you think when that happens? Yeah, I'm hearing one or two of you saying it depends what it is. And I think that does kind of amplify some of the things you're talking about. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. Okay, so the general flavor there is a sense of feeling um, out of control and anxious, uh, sphere of the unknown, uncertain, uh, mixture of emotions, quite sort of churning emotions, maybe sometimes angry. And then one of you, one of you is saying, actually, I can tell the difference when actually I've got some ability and choice to de determine how I want to operate. So I'm just going to take the chat off now. So what we also what we see from our groups is actually the same um, the same phenomena. Oh, my slides have just frozen now, which is what sometimes happen. We are learning, so I'm just going to zip out and just get those slides loosened up again. Yeah. Okay, and now come back in. Okay, Lee, can you just confirm to me that you can see those slides? Yeah, okay, thanks. Thanks, Kate. Thank you. Yeah. So when we choose change or we find choice within change, we tend to feel more of those things you described about excitement, uh, possibility, and actually this is probably going to help solve a problem or I can see a way forward. When the change is imposed upon us, then it tends to feel a bit left field, a bit out of control. And we have that sense of anxiousness, nervousness and uncertainty. And, and that's quite powerful, that sort of human response, because then that obviously the green one, the one on the left, helps us to then deal with the change, whatever it calls for from us. And when we go into that imposed change, it makes us feel more static, more possibly on, on the back foot. So it makes quite a difference then our sort of take on the change in terms of how we deal with it. And I think wherever in imposed change we can find choice and or give others choice, it really increases our resilience. And particularly if we also know that ahead of the next change. So it's quite useful, I think, to think about this in this way. So the slides have indeed frozen, so I'm just going to come out from them completely. Just think amongst yourselves. And I'm going to stop sharing the screen. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Can, can you see that? Are you able to see that? Kate, you're my thumbs up person. Can you see tensions in change? Can't see it yet, Anne. Not see it yet, no. Okay. Hmm. Lee, you haven't got access to them, have you, don't think? I can show them if you need to, I think, Anne. Yeah, if you can. We're looking just at uh, tensions in change, Lee, if you've got it. I'm going to jump to the curve. Hmm. How are we doing, Lee? What can we see? Okay, Kate's got it. Okay, okay, thanks, Kate. Yeah. And then, Lee, will you be able to move them on when I need that? Need you to? Yeah, certainly can. That's great. Yeah. Okay, so this is just a little bit more than about some of the those tensions in change, where actually. You know, when we're kind of working in the world as we know it or knew it two weeks ago, then a lot of what we're focusing on is kind of um, the predictability of things, you know, things being consistent, us knowing what the outcomes are, knowing how we're going to go about things. And yet when we're actually right in change, what's called from us is much more around um, exploring, experimenting and learning. And when we look at those two lists, we're being 
asked to behave like that, kind of the world is calling for, for, for that from us, but not quite so easy to do. So Lee, you move on to the next, next one, the curve. So I'm imagining most of you will know this very well, particularly those of you in the OD, yeah, I'm seeing a few smiling nods. And I think this is ultimately very true uh, in terms of what people are experiencing as we go through uh, this imposed change. So I'll take it that you're familiar with it. So the question is, and Lee's gonna give you a poll, where would you say you feel now about the kind of um, the current change that we're in? I guess, you know, coronavirus and the work implications. Where would you say you are now on the curve? And there might just be one or two of you that can't see the poll, but if you don't, don't worry, I'll uh, give you a verbal on how it's coming through. Okay, I think we're about there. So those of you who can see it, those of you who can't, uh, most of you seem to be, I want a few more coming through, a few more coming through. So the majority of you dialing in today are kind of either coming towards the bottom of that left hand side of the curve and starting to come up the other side. There's still one or two feeling that sense of actually trying to hold off this change and what it really means. Uh, one or two in that bargaining place about how can I look, up, look out for myself and make this work. Probably the majority of you are in that kind of low energy piece, that kind of apathy. We know things are changing, not too sure what to yet. And then actually the majority of you are in that acceptance place, which is the kind of, I get it, I can see things have changed, but I haven't yet had the um, full opportunity or the rising energy to really explore. And then there's a handful of you down there and explore an understanding. So the curve is really helpful to make sense of it for ourselves and for those around us. So again, it's a really useful tool to help look after your own resilience by making sense of where you are, where others are, and kind of that's to be expected. So I think that can be really helpful, just the recognition. But even more helpful, particularly those of you who are moving round, is what are the things that have helped you to move round the curve? What's helping? So if we'd like to chat those responses, so we'll just go for the helps, I think, Lee. So what are the things that are helping you to move round that curve, to stay choiceful and stay feeling control or sort of retrieve that feeling of, of control? So if we knock the pole off and we'll just hear them. So they're going to come through and then Lee's going to type them as he reads them. So daily updates is one, Lee. I'll read them out. And certainly we're seeing talking with others in the team. Staying connected. Thinking how I can use this to my advantage. Calling people, support from the senior team, new, new daily plan for myself, finding new ways to build enthusiasm in my team, Uh, look at the benefits. Okay, that's great. And just some other ones that I would pick up from groups when we do this with groups uh, is quite often is actually, oh, here's another one coming in, work, working on things, get, get, uh, working on projects I didn't have time for before. So that could be at home or at work, couldn't it? Getting around to those things we just haven't had time for. I think one of the big things we know in our programs when we do this that people realize what helps is talking to other people and sometimes it's people who are in the same boat sometimes people with a different perspective can really help and one of the other things is recognizing what hasn't changed it can be really easy particularly in the early days of imposed change to feel that everything has changed as we start to focus identify what hasn't changed that can be really helpful in terms of keeping that kind of internal resilience um, also thinking about my own experience, where, when have I been like this before? How did I handle it last time? What do I know works for me can really help. Um, 
and I think there's one about senior teams I think and kind of getting good information I think David you said that one that when you're getting good information can really help so when you look at that list those are some of the things that are helping you uh, again I think we'll circulate it afterwards with a webinar or you'll be able to see it there there might be some things that you think actually I might be feeling okay at the moment but if I get a dip these could be really good things to come back to things that I know actually help me and how can I do those more often um, and sometimes actually reminding yourself what you already know and tapping back into what you already know can be really helpful so Lee if we go on to the summer the one that follows this one the next one the next slide yeah so just at a sort of headline level at the very beginning of change and it was interesting uh, one of you said uh, the denial phase what really helps us all is information and obviously getting the information that we can uh, assembling it in a way that's useful and probably I would say at the moment avoiding too much um, repetition or inaccurate information I'm not a social media person but what I hear is that's not necessarily the best thing to be uh, topping us up with at the moment bottom left then what really helps there is that feeling of being supported so hopefully webinars like this talking to people people you know that will be good people for you at the moment I think we all know who the mood hoovers are and they might be ones to limit our time with at the moment and we know the people that give us a lift bottom right then when we're starting to sort of explore the new world what helps then is encouragement opportunity to experiment do things differently but not expect ourselves to get it right first time we're all going to trip up and tread on a few toes at the moment so there's a bit about allowing ourselves and others to make some mistakes in the new world and then top right really helps when we can actually get to a stage of understanding and recognizing and making sense of the new world um, and being able to actually just know what's expected, know what we what we um, what good looks like, and be able to operate there. So, so some of those helps and some of those things that keep us in control are one of the big things we know that helps with resilience. Now the next slide, Lee. Because what the resilience thing is actually we are all kind of starting with a particular level of resilience when we come to the next change. So what we want to try and do is help ourselves and others almost thrive. Uh, get the best from a change so that actually we've got a higher level of resilience a higher start point for the next one um, if we just get through it and those of you who are on with Dave yesterday he was talking about mindset and just kind of survive the change then we might come through it, you know the same place we started what we want to really try and minimize is that thing where we dive and actually the change leaves us reduced levels from before so anything and everything we can do to top up our levels in terms of control, choice, confidence, those of you who were with Lee the day before, yes, talk about is top up, we really help ourselves. Then lastly, we've got a few for you about building resilience that might be really useful when you think about yourself with your team or maybe even with your family. So this is our kind of like tip, tip, uh, toolbox tips to take away. So one of the things is about actually getting the facts. So not trying to hide our head in the sand, not listening to too poor information, but actually getting our head around facts. That is also including what we know. We're making that encouraging information. And I'm sure we're all doing that at home in terms of our routines. Um, but obviously that can really help if we're doing that with others as well building in flexibility so kind of actually designing uh, the work of the team or what's happening next with flexibility in it so it doesn't have to be one size fits all or we get it right first time fourth one then is the obvious one about strengthening our networks um, so now's a great time to be reaching out to friends and families we don't normally talk to use FaceTime, use Zoom, whatever, but also at work. I mean, people are telling me they're having quite different conversations with people they wouldn't necessarily always talk to. So strengthening that kind of social connection, really helpful. And creating or maintaining a sense of purpose. And I think that's really important to not lose sight of, you know, particularly on the work front, never, never, with all this change, what is it still really important? What hasn't changed? What are we trying to do? And again, on the, on the home front, really, getting that focus on your own sense of purpose, your own sense of where you're headed. And the last one, it's a single line, it covers a lot of stuff. I think a lot of you dialing in will be familiar with this, but anything we can do to help kind of validate and appreciate 
people's emotional response, ours and others, which I think is where the curve really comes in, is really helpful just to understand that. So if we were with a real team, we'd spend a lot more time on each of those and how you actually might do that for a real team or a real group. But just to finish, we'll just do a final um, poll on which one of those tips at the end you think is the most useful one for you right now. Which one of those things would be most useful and helpful for you right now? <laughs> okay. Okay, so the strongest one is create a sense of purpose. So that's a fairly clear uh, steer for yourselves, I guess, to, you know, with, with the people around you, whether that's your work team or your kind of home team. Um, I'm, I'm imagining the fact that uh, emotional appreciation is low is because we've already got, got that one on our radar. You can see how that might be really useful with a team uh, to help, okay, where do we need to focus? So that's about as far as we wanted to go today. Half an hour doesn't take too long. Lee will capture those polls. Um, so any questions that you've got for us with our experience really of working with people in change? Any questions to come through just in the last couple of minutes? Got the chat facility there. <laughs> so Lee, would they pop up on the screen? I think they would. Yes, they would. Okay. Okay, well, we'll take that as a good sign that hopefully what we said has been useful. If there is anything that you'd like to talk to us more about after today, you know where to find us either, you know, individually or as a collective team. Um, we're doing a couple of, a couple of webinars most days. Several of you have been to several of them. So there's more coming later this week and next week. We've also put an offer out about online coaching for people, if that would be helpful. Um, Wheel of Wellbeing that Lee sort of explored earlier in the week. Um, something else to help people think about staying in good shape and you can read the other things yourself mental health i think that's going to be really important and um, we're going to be offering some half day online sessions um for that as well so next slide lee so stay in touch with us um you can see the kind of things we're doing there you recognize our faces those that you need us if you're not already linked in please do if you've got colleagues or even friends who would enjoy any of these webinars just a half an hour we'd be very happy for anybody to join us at the moment we really want to offer as much help as we can. So that's it. I think we're just bang up to the clock. And I think the last slide is a feedback tool. I can see some messages coming through, people saying thank you. Uh, but the very last one is a, um, Lee will tell me what it's called. It's a smart code, I think. Uh, so if you want to give us feedback in that method, uh, Lee, if you can give us the last slide. Yeah, we'll get that out to uh, everybody after okay. the webinar. Okay, different way of doing it. Yeah, it's a different way, just any other further feedback would be really helpful, particularly any of the topics would be interested in or how we can possibly improve the webinars. So apology for the technology. I'll tell you, that's, my, that's down to me, not down to Lee. Uh, but we're all learning. Uh, so thank you very much for your time and I wish you well for the rest of the day. So that's bye from me.